Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Catholic Talk Show. We got a really cool episode for you today. We're going to talk about all the biblical figures, their names. Yeah, we're going to talk what are the real names of the people that you know in the Bible. We're going to find out the the name of God, the name of our Lord Jesus, where the name Mary comes from, the name of the 12 apostles, and more. Who wants to play the name game? I know I do. Let's play. We're back. We're back. The Catholic talk show. Glad to have you guys here. Um, we're going to be talking about all the biblical names in the Bible and what they mean. I love the name game. And these are names that you're really in need of knowing. So where Why don't we- you tell them our names, Ryan, Ryan, I'm Ryan, <laughs> I'm Ryan and I'm not Ryan. Yes, but I'm father rich. That's Very right. happy to be with cast media studios out here in LA. Once again, it's an absolutely gorgeous day. And this is a really neat topic. I'm excited about it because God reveals himself to Moses. He reveals himself to Abraham, the covenant. You know, he reveals himself in the person of Jesus. And there's always names associated with this revelation. So it's pretty cool to jump into this and get to know not only God, but Jesus and the apostles and Mary herself. So I'm, I'm very thrilled about this, uh, this theme. Yeah. So before we get started, I want to remind everyone, uh, here's a name. It's uh, CatholicTalkShow.com. Get to know it. Get to know it. Get to know it well. Go there. And even uh, subscribe to it. You, psh, do you have a good name if you do that? <laughs> it's very true. Uh, so yeah, go there. <laughs> CatholicTalkShow.com. Uh, follow us on YouTube, on iTunes, uh, you, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all the things. And then also uh, go to Patreon.com forward slash Catholic Talk Show. There you can uh, support the Catholic Talk Show, make sure that we continue to get to do these episodes. And if you don't, you're, you have a bad name with us. Yeah, you don't want a bad name. You want a name above other names. That's right. Maybe not the name above all names. You don't want that. No. You don't want that. That comes with great responsibility. Yeah, yeah that's, already, that's already been given. It. That's been given. But you would get a name above other names, and we definitely want to get to know your name, especially our supporters yes. out there. So we thank you so much for financially supporting us through the Patreon app. Check that out. We really appreciate you being patrons of this great movement of the Catholic Talk Show. So if you look at the Bible... The Bible that you probably read is written in English. Now, the English language has only been around for a couple, couple hundred, hundred years. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think your Bible's written in Guido, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was like, hey, Dude, what I, are you doing? I love your dad. You know, like your dad, before he passed away, he had that conversation with Jesus, and it was like he was a Guido in New York. He's like, yeah, I would talk to Jesus. And I said, give me a little more time. Oh, He's that like, was beautiful. Oh, it was beautiful, man. I love that. But in the Bible, you know, you, you're reading it and you're seeing names like Peter and James yeah. and John. And uh, these, these names, names, they actually mean something. They mean something. But these names are not what they would have been called in their in their life on earth. Uh, these names didn't exist at the time. The language that these names are part of didn't exist. Um, and a name is a very powerful thing, particularly in religion. When a human being encounters something... One of their first in- instincts is to say, what is that? What is its name? Who are you? Who are you? Right? Um, when Adam was in the Garden of Eden, one of the first tasks human beings was given by God was to name all the animals. Human beings, scientifically, when they discover something, it's very important for them to name that, giving it you know, genus and species so it's categorized so they can understand it. And a person is the same, too. When you're baptized, you're given your baptismal name, and that is the name that God will call you uh, at the resurrection and at at your judgment. A name defines a thing, so names are incredibly important. And understanding the origin of a name and the the deeper meaning of a name will help you to more fully understand the figures that we're going to talk about, like the apostles, like the Blessed Virgin, like our Lord Jesus, and like God himself— Understanding the names that they have revealed themselves as or have been called is very important. It's just like uh, etymology, right? It's just like a, pretty much, yeah. It's rooted, yeah. yeah it's rooted in etymology because there is a, a deeper meaning. And I think of Adam, you know, Adam, the first man, Adamo, Adamo. You know, like you, you think about 
uh, his relationship with all of creation, as you just expressed. And he's looking at all of creation with that preternatural gift of infused knowledge. So he looks at something, encounters it, and knows it perfectly, and then gives it a name. Right. So it, it's really interesting. I think of my, my sister, right? So even as a little girl, you remember Cabbage Patch dolls? Yep. They were such a popular thing. We used them as weapons. <laughs> because, <laughs> because they had like a very pliable body, and then they're... Their noses breached a point oh, and yeah. my brother just crack each oh, other yeah. at them. <laughs> that would hurt. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're, they're terrifying. I was pretty rough with some of my sister's toys. I think, you know, we had major conflict in that area too, <laughs> you know. But the, the, the neat thing, though, was she had this doll and she named it. And I, I remember as her brother, but she could care it. less about the Cabbage Patch dolls. I remember her name. It was Diabelle. And Diabelle? You, yeah, Diabelle. Sounds a little diabelical. <laughs> Diabelical. Things coming alive at night and cabbage patching. Oh, dude. Cutting the back What's of your What's the leg? etymology <laughs> of that name? We had uh, Snuffle Up. From, you uh, remember Snuffle yeah. Up? It was, it was up on the top mm. shelf and it had glow in the dark eyes. Ooh. And at night, that's all you would see was these glow in the dark eyeballs. No, thank you. Yeah, it was kind of freaky. Terrible. Remember the cabbage patch? Uh, like the little trading cards. What are they? Trash, garbage, trash. garbage pail kids. Sorry, garbage pail kids. Sorry, Ryan. I never did that. I never <laughs> traded. Gu- yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, your sister would have been mad at you if you ripped those things off. But the, the fact that like fundamentally to this little girl, you know, my sister, her identity, she wanted and desired to name her doll because she wanted to have a specific relationship with Diablo. I can only imagine, you know, my sister thinking and dreaming this whole story behind this one diabel this this little doll mm-hmm. you know but that that's right down to the very core of our identity as human beings like adam to have this type of relationship and there is so much to a name because it reveals identity All right so let's start with the the fundamental the 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 most fundamental name and that is what is the name of god i mean god is god. it I just nailed that one. Good. All right. Well, Ryan, we can move on now. I think mic drop. I think the first thing that comes to mind is Yahweh. You know, I am who am, you know, um, El Shaddai, Adonai. You know, there's a lot of things that filter through through my head right off the bat. But I think Yahweh is a a big one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am because it's Exodus. I mean, that's it's right there with uh, Moses. Yeah. So when Moses was um, receiving the. The, the charge from God to go and free the Israelites, Moses asked the very logical question, well, who should I, who shall I say is sending me? And God in response said, uh, Aheya Asher Aheya, right? Which means I am who am, mm. or I am who is. Did God say it in that language? But that's, that was Hebrew. Okay. That's how it was it, communicated. Yeah. Uh, Aheya Asher Aheya. And think about that mm-hmm. message that's that's contained in Moses transmitting that message to Pharaoh. Like I am who am. What does that what does that communicate to Pharaoh? What does that communicate to us? That this existential communication from God the Creator states that. Yeah, I he is. Yeah. Not not my name is God. I don't know, yeah, whatever whatever these names of these gods of Egypt were, right, you know. Ra or Atun or Amun, right? No, I am who am. I am. It's like existential. I mean, it's like, dude, dude you just blew my dude, mind, bro. That's probably the biggest mic drop of all time. It's totally a mic drop. Who are you? I am. <laughs> I, I am who am. I am who am. I Get it right. Is man. I is. I so, like that though, because I mean, it does. It speaks from an existential, eternal place of bel- of being. We yeah. can't, but see there, we can't just name God because n- God cannot fit within our pretenses it's, it's, of yeah, words. It's we can't. So it's, it's really a, 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 a philis- well, a theological revealing of a part of God's nature mm-hmm. is he is who is. Mm-hmm. Now, I bet you Moses was like, uh, thanks. Uh, Okay. okay. Immediate, like immediate wonder and awe. <laughs> yeah, I can just picture yeah, that like, uh, uh whoa. <laughs> Yeah. So the you you mentioned Yahweh, right? Mm-hmm. So do you know where that comes from? The Old Testament. Right, Old Testament. Yeah. But that's not how it was really pronounced, really. Mm-hmm. So Yahweh was the name of God, and the, the Hebrew scribes who were copying the um, 
the books of the Bible, Old Testament. When they would write, they would write a four character word. Y H W H, right? Called the Tetragrammaton. Yeah. Because they couldn't spell out. They weren't allowed. They weren't because, allowed. Yeah. because they were afraid that even that would be taking the name of the Lord yes. in vain. And mm-hmm. they took that very seriously. That's wow. how important it was. So they would only put the ancient Hebrew did not have vowels. Yep. Right? Yep. So they would put the tetragrammaton, which are those those four characters. Um and over time, so there's there's a couple ways that things that would happen. As language developed, they would start putting vowel indicators over it. Or because you weren't so supposed to pronounce the tetragrammaton, you would put the word above it for Lord, Adonai, mm-hmm. right? So Adonai meant Lord. It was a more generic term for God. And it was meant to be, don't say the tetragrammaton, say Adonai. But then as language developed, they started putting vowel markers over it. So it was understood then that if you took the tetragrammaton and, you, and then the Adonai was the vowel markers, it basically rendered into Yahweh. So Yahweh is a mix between the tetragrammaton and the misunderstanding cool. of the that Adonai cool. as vowel markers. Mm. That's pretty cool. That is. So I, I just think of my professor in the seminary. Dr. Lopez. You've had Dr. Lopez. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he just sits at his desk and he like clears his throat. Most of the, most of the presentation, like, <clears> throat> throat> you know, <laughs> and he's going into this Trinitarian explanation of God as Trinity. So again, father, son, and Holy spirit that, that this is also a revelation, you know, and he's, he's saying, you know, <clears throat> throughout history, you know, and he's, he's talking about like the throughout, triangle throughout history. <laughs> No, he's not Batman, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone should be Batman. (laughs) So he draws the triangle on the board, and then he gets to the point where he's like, "But this is absurd," and he just (laughs) he scratches it out. Then he draws a clover, explains it, but this is absurd. And then he says, "Is he a walrus?" I mean, I mean, he's not a walrus. He's just like he's an interesting character. This this theologian, brilliant guy. I love him to death. Big shout out to Dr. Lopez and his family. Very smart. Very smart guy. So then he finally says, the only way to properly diagram the Trinity is a straight line. The father's love from eternity loves the son. And the son in reciprocal love returns that love to the father. And the love in between is the Holy Spirit. And he does this like radio wave. (laughs) This radio wave. wave. Yeah. Well, I would counter that. And this is the personification of the Holy Spirit. And even this. He's absurd. And he just like, <laughs> and he, and he erased it because we just draw, we draw so closely to the divine, but it's, it's, we encounter it. We're moved to wonder and awe. We experience the revelation of the name, but we can never exhaust its, its true depths of meaning because of our weakened intellect that we've, well, that's we, not even weakened. It's just lower intellect. It's a, it's a lower intellect, but it's, it's weakened in the sense that it's not the preternatural infused knowledge intellect that, that we had in Adam. Right. It's, it's an intellect that has been, you know, in, in a sense, uh, defaced or demolished in a way in the fall. Deprecated. Deprecated. Like deprecation. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, even Yahweh is a, is a deprecated form of what they were trying to ex- express. Right. Or at so, least the interpretation. Right. Another yeah. name that you'll read a lot in the Bible is Elohim, mm-hmm. right? I like the way you did the Chim. Elohim. Elohim. I don't know how to pronounce it right. I did. Yeah. All right, Elohim. but I won't do that again. But, okay. But it really, that is one of the most common ways. That would be how we say God as a generic term. We say the gods or God or whatever, or God, capital G. They would say El or Elohim, right? And that was their generic term for God. So you'll see that. And biblical scholars will even classify um, who, what classification of writers writing a particular Old Testament book. They'll call it the Elohist or the Yahwists, right? Yes, yeah. By whether or not they're using Elohim or Yahweh. Hmm. So, and Elohim was pretty much the fundamental ancient Semitic way of saying God, il, el, right? And you'll see that even today that uh, Muslims and Syriac Christians, they will call God Allah, or El, El. It comes from that same root word, El, El, El. So that's a really fundamental way um, that God was spoken. Now, we all come from European background, right? So 
in the church, it's Deus, right? Mm-hmm. Now, Deus, Latin. Latin. De. Us. De. You complete me. I, <laughs> Dude, you we work so well together. You complete my sentences. Let, let's do that in reverse. I'm That's gonna deprecation start. right there. I'm going to go. <laughs> De. Us. Deus. Caritas est. Sorry about that. So, First encyclical <laughs> of Pope Benedict, your guy. Yes. So that word that word actually goes all the way back to the Proto-Indo-European language, right? Now there is no That's rep- what I was gonna say. <laughs> the Proto-Indo-European. That's pi. <laughs> so Proto-Indo-European is essentially the ancestor of most of the modern Romance languages, a lot of the Germanic languages, even some of the um it's like Persian Latin. and Indian languages. No, Latin is descends Latin, Greek, they all from come from Proto- Proto-Indo-European, yeah. right? Now, Proto-Indo-European, there's no writing of it. There's no um, recorded history of it. It's a language that was inferred by understanding the way that linguistics change when going from culture to culture. So if it's going to German, this R will go this way or whatever. And they can basically recreate it, right? (coughs) So the word deus comes from the Proto-Indo-European word deus, right? Or celestial or shining. So to them... The word God would be shining, the thing that shines, the thing that is in the sky that shines, right? And that was a, that's the next development from the Hebrew. Well, no, Hebrew is a, not a proto-Indo-European No, but language. I'm saying like we're, we're developing this yeah. this name for God almost chronologi- <clears throat> Pretty much chronologically. Okay. okay. So that's where Deus came from. Deus came that's from that. Shiny word. Right. So Deus. So the okay. same thing where Jupiter comes from, Right. Sky, Space? F- sky father, Jupiter, Deus, Pater, Pater, yeah, Deus, Pater, Jupiter. That's how it kind of where it came from. So, even Deus is kind of a very generic a variation term yeah. of God. Now, the word that we use for God is obviously just God, but that also comes from Proto-European uh, languages. Mm. But it comes from the Germanic branch of that, and that comes from the word Gudan. 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 It's just fun to say. I know. I have a friend. His last name is Gudan. Do it again. Do it again. (laughs) Gudan. (laughs) Stop. So the I. So where the word comes from, it comes from like Sanskrit, and there's there's some even from very early Persian languages where they had a god called Kudan, right? And it comes from the one of the earliest languages that human used, and it means. Uh, if you go even further back to Sanskrit, it's a hutan, right? So sacrifice, to whom sacrifices are made. So hutan, sacrifices are made to them, right? Wow. Hutan. So if you take that and it starts going through the languages of evolving, right? Eventually you get to hudan, then gudan, then guat, then giod, then god. And so it kind of slurs itself over the time and uses the ways that language has evolved and turns into the word God. Yeah. A lot of G. Mm. A lot of G. Yeah. Well, it started off as a K. It started out with a K. That's, yeah. that's fascinating. I like it's Hutan the, the best. It's the, Hutan. <laughs> it's the evolution of language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you could see that over time, you know, the ancient languages give way to expressions and slang. So even our own language, you know, like I, we were talking about rap. We grew up with rap music yeah. and how, how it was expressed in our generation from KRS-One to, you know, KRS now one. now all the way through to... He's positive, man. Yeah, well, he is, but I actually still KRS listen to KRS-One. He's a positive KRS, guy. KRS, isn't he the one, is he, is he the one who's going to rock you? No. No, no that's, that's KLF. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> but you know, we were talking about like our generation of rappers, and then growing up through the '90s into the 2000s. I like stuff. how you're confident enough to say that you have a generation of rappers. Yeah, we do. I mean, yeah. in comparison to what we were listening to on the corner over here on on Sunset oh, yeah, Boulevard, it's kind of like the the God fitty, word, fitty, the rapper, and it's like, what are they even saying? And it's the it's the mumble rap of today, mumble rap. But like, but he's opinionated. Well, here's the thing, and and. There's certain rhythm. Are. There's certain rhythm to it. You know, like yeah. I, I can bob my head to a couple of them. It's like, oh, that's a cool rhythm. But at the same time, what are they saying? I really don't know. But the younger generation, 
probably know they what they're saying. Yeah. What, you know what that saying. means? What's that? We're you, getting old. You're getting old. I know. Yeah. Your feet are sore. But I know. You're getting gray hairs. God, I need to use a roller for my back. Uh, that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah that good. roller's money, dude. Yeah, yeah that's good stuff. What, what were we talking about? I don't even know. God. Talk about names. Uh, <laughs> and we got into rapping. and Well, it's the, the yeah. evolution of language. Yeah. So well, how things are expressed. Yeah, how yeah. things are expressed. It's like through time. Yeah. It's like it, it's expressed in different manner. Yeah. And that's what I love about the church. You know, Traddy's like our brother here, you know, good Ryan Scheel, mm -hmm. you know, just so strong on, you know, how the church needs to celebrate mass only in Latin. And I know that you're not that way. He's I know not you're not that way. I'm just giving have... you, I'm giving you a hard time. Now there's, there's certain respect and reverence to it. And I actually still appreciate the Latin language yeah. and the I celebration Latin, of Latin I think mass. Latin is a novelization and we should go back to Aramaic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go way, way yeah. back. Latin is just a glorified an ancient Greek. vernacular, you know, but the, the point that I'm making is the mass and the celebration of mass and the passage of the word was always done in the vernacular. And it was always, it was always communicated in that manner and how that has adjusted throughout time. So the liturgy isn't like contained in a box and there was a golden age of, of liturgical expression. Well, they have, litur they have liturgy in a box now. Well, there's certain places that do try to put it in the box and that's where I think we go wrong. You just don't put the liturgy in a box. Don't put the liturgy in the box. And if you do put a nice bow on it. <laughs> Because it's important. Well, then that just puts more impediments for it to get out. That's <laughs> no, no, no. All right. So the name we're going to talk about now is the name that uh, every knee in heaven, on earth, and below should bow at when they hear. That's the name of our Lord Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Yeah, such a good every voice. Knee How do you know all these terrible songs? Oh, man, that's a good one. No, it's not. <clears throat> Again, we a, disagree. Okay. I've got a tambourine. Ooh, do you have a rain stick? <laughs> <laughs> I have a guitar, but I'm not going to play it for that song because it's terrible. Dude. Oh, I like that why, song. Why would I hear a rain stick? Do I just want to laugh? I it's just, a rain stick, yeah, dude. It's a rain stick. It's just funny. Whoever plays the rain stick, it just looks funny. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Deprecation, dude. So anyway. <laughs> so can we get back to the name of our Lord? <laughs> yes, Thank please. You. So we all know Jesus. Everyone that everyone knows the, the name mm -hmm. Jesus. But in his lifetime, our Lord would never have been called the word Jesus. The, the letter J didn't even exist for another 1,500 years, essentially. Um, none of the apostles would have been like, Jesus, save me, or anything, right? They were not speaking in English. They were speaking, English wouldn't develop till. 1600s. I would have loved to have invented the letter J, by the way. That would have been a That cool would have thing. been a pretty good accomplishment. Ryan, yeah. when he was in high school, used to tell girls that he invented the letter J. He's like, I mean, I don't want to brag, but he invented the letter J. So when you write it, it's because of me. Yeah. So <laughs> I give royalties every time the letter J is It's right just right. cool to think about, you know, like somebody's like, hey, there's this J. We're going to pull this thing out. Let's right make here. a J here. Yeah, let's yeah. make it. And here. this is the sound it's And it's a make. cool letter. J. It's a cool letter. Yeah. That's yeah, it's great. So no, no, no J Jay and so Jesus. What would, what would the apostles and what would the people who were alive during the time of Jesus' life actually have called him? They would not have called him Jesus. They would have called him Yeshua, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I've heard that Yeshua. one. Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeshua was a very, Mashiach. very common, actually, name at the time of uh, the first century. Was that Jacob? No, Yeshua is... Jesus. You, well, if you really <laughs> wanted to be more... In the Bible... In the New Testament, there's the Yeshua. It would be pronounced Jesus to us, but to everyone else, it's Joshua. Joshua. Jesus' name mm. would be more accurately translated into English that makes as so much sense. Joshua. Yeah, Yeshua. But that's, Joshua. it's our Lord and Savior, Josh. Sounds mm -hmm. weird. Yeah. 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 Well, that's only because we've been saying Jesus for right. so long. Yeah. That's true. Joshua, take the it. wheel. It's just, it, just, it doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> right? Uh, I've got No, it. stop singing. I've got <laughs> Don't sing that. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to sing. I was thinking of, I was thinking of my buddy, Josh, and I'm like, that would just be Joshua. such, yeah, that, that just doesn't work that way. Uh, does it? No. It doesn't roll off the tongue. It's not as fun to say. No, it's not. Yeshua is pretty cool though. Yeeshua is very cool. Yeah. So do I actually Yeshua use means? Yeshua in my uh, prayer all the time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeshua, Yeshua Mashiach. Is that Hebrew or Yeshua? He, it's, yeah, it, it, was it so, Aramaic? Aram, well, Aramaic. So it's like dialect Ar of Hebrew or something. Aramaic, kind of, yes. Okay. So, hmm. but no, not really. Aramaic was a Semitic language, yeah. but it's from Aram, right? Aram was a big regional power at the time. That would be like um, Syria today or something. Like, yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. Assy Assyrian. <clears throat> yeah. So when they would call him, they would call him Yeshua, but they probably wouldn't even call him Yeshua. They probably call him Yeshua. 
Hmm. Right. That's like the short form. That's like calling him Josh. Josh. Yeah. Hmm. So our Lord and Savior, Josh. It's pretty hmm. strange. So you stop saying that. <laughs> so it's definitely stop seeing it. <laughs> so do you know what that name means? God saves. God saves. Right. Yeah. That's right. It's beautiful. Man. I got that right. Yeah. At yeah. The name you know, of I didn't Joshua. Know. I'm gonna What need. does it do to you? Oh, nothing. <laughs> no, it kind of makes me it makes me cringe a little bit. Because yeah. I think I'm just so yeah, we're used just, to yeah. Jesus. I don't know. I knew a couple dudes named Josh and they were all kind of wieners. I, well, I'm telling you, man. Yeah. Big note, big shout out to Father Josh Swallows. He's a good buddy. You remember Josh, right? Yeah. He's a good guy. So during the first century, that Joshua or Yeshua or Yeshua was a very Common name. Common, yeah. Because they were under the occupation of the Romans. And who was Joshua in the Old Testament? Joshua was a great warrior. He was the one who conquered the, the Holy Land. Yeah. He was Moses' sidekick who went yeah. in and did Moses' dirty work and was the soldier yeah. who took over Cana. Yeah. So that was a very, it was a hopeful name. It was God will save. And they wanted a conqueror, right? <clears throat> and, uh, so, I mean, if I mean, scholars will have found hundreds of examples of people in that time in writing named Yeshua, right? Yeah. So, right. There's a scripture passage of the naming of Jesus, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. like, and you like, shall name him Jesus. Jesus. Uh, well, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, even Yeshua. the book, the mm -hmm. book of Sirach, it's really Jesus ben Sirach, mm -hmm. right? Or Yeshua ben Yeshua Sirach. Ben Sirach, yeah. Right. I actually have that open right here. You do? Yeah, I do. That's a good. Good I book. love Sirach is one of my favorite. Oh, books. me too. Yeah. So, you know, there is also a feast of the holy name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's one of the uh, yeah. patronal feasts of the Jesuits. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, next time you're saying, uh, saying your prayers, prayers, yeah, throw a Yeshua in there. Oh, or I do it every day. Joshua. No, don't do that. I'm allowed to pray don't. to Joshua. I'm allowed to pray to our Lord and Savior Joshua if I you want know, to. You know what that reminds me of? Talladega Nights when they're praying. I like. It's like I like three pound, five dear, ounce baby Jesus. Dear six pound, seven ounce baby Joshua. <laughs> Thank you for our sponsors. <laughs> Thank you for okay, our Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that? Oh, it's seen. great. Yeah. It's so good. Here's a quick one. So, do you know what the actually the longest word in the entire Bible is? Ooh. I don't think so. It's one of those places, I bet. No, it's Somewhere not. Somewhere in the mysterious mind of... It's one of the... <laughs> it's one of the uh, the names of one of the prophet Isaiah's sons. Ooh. And that's the longest word in the Bible. Halak Bidijad. Nope. Ready? <laughs> that was good. It's close. Whew. Let's see. This is like when you get to church and you get the... Uh, you have to do the genealogy of Jesus. Oh, uh, funny. Jehura Basabadam begat Boaz and Boaz <laughs> begat... Jerephaniah Tithon. <laughs> you know. And, you, like and a, you see that and you're just like, oh, why? I'm sick. I got a sore throat. It sounds like an antibody. <laughs> so the longest name and the longest word in the Bible is Mahershalah Hashbahaz. I told you I was close. I tell you what, sometimes you struggle with pronunciation, Shil, but you sold me on that. Yeah. That was well, pretty good. We still haven't. The jury's still out. We haven't seen the word. So if we have an expert listening in, please, yeah. you know, let us know how she yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you said it with a lot of confidence. I did. Whenever I direct people to lector over that, like a reading <laughs> with very difficult Check. names, I'm just like, look, if you get it wrong, I said, here's here's how you know I would say it. If you get it right, just say it confidently. <laughs> you know, just get it out there confidently. You know, because you don't want people to start. Just you know, fake it till you make it. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then they're you, not gonna they're not gonna know the difference between jeconiatite. No, or, and, yeah. and and you don't want to sit there and be like jika jika juka juka juka. But um, mm. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Jeconiatite. I just made that one up. By that's, the way, uh, I like that word. Jeconiatite. Jeconiatite. I think that's a kind of rock. It's like jika 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 jeconiatite. Uh, he threw that in there at the end. That yeah, was, good. That was good. Yeah, All right, who's I'm, I'm his hype man. So now here's one more thing before we uh, to get off the topic. Is, right. And this ties back to the name of God. So, you know, in the Gospel of John... They're saying, well, how, how is Jesus doing all these things? He's not yet 40 years old. He's, he's so young. And then they, they question him, right? And they, they're saying this about Abraham and talking to him. And, and Jesus says, I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. Mm -hmm. And they lost their minds. They tried to stone him. They tried to throw him out of the temple. Yeah. They were incensed because... Yeah. Well, Wait, that was wait, heresy. So, Where's well, the heresy so, button? So what's, what's so heretical is saying, before Abraham was, I am. Well, 
that is going right back to that tetragrammaton. That is yeah. going back to the Don't you a dare hair, a share, yeah. a hair, which is I am. So Jesus right there was saying, I am. And, and before, before Abraham, before your father Abraham, I am. So he was saying he was, always is, always will be, and is him and but God are him and the Father are one. Right. But think about that was it. A powerful statement. Oh, right. Very. That, think about how I mean, like he was just <clears throat> like he he said it. They're not supposed to say it. So he was like he broke the law, you know. But he was the one who had the authority. Yeah. And and in the similar fashion of Don't how you go God saying that. about how God revealed Himself to Moses, in the same way, like Jesus is revealing Himself mm-hmm. to the people as well. And where He does that is just so is so interesting. Because I mean, it did it. It caused a huge uproar, mm-hmm. but. You know, that's the that's the beauty and the power of a name because it affects major change and transformation. It's just powerful, man. Now, one one more thing is that I don't know if you remember this, but in 2008, Pope Benedict said that from now on in all Catholic songs, literature and in, even in the mass, the name Yahweh was not to be spoken. I remember anymore. that. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. What? Well, why? I don't, I just, you remember that too? Yahweh, Stop. I know you are near. Really? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, that's terrible. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's a thing. That's they a play thing. that with it. Uh, but it, that was it, stricken from the hymn books. Yeah. I, and it was really just to make sure that proper reverence is being, mm-hmm. you know, due to the name. But its name. That, that was. So pretty, why, why that one instead of like Jesus? I mean, like that's still God's name. Is it? Well, be, he did that. He just, we're not allowed to say Joshua anymore. The, Yes. Gotcha. We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua. 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 <laughs> I used to always call my buddy Josh Kubari Yeshua from college, undergrad days. Like, Yeshua. So let's talk about the the woman who gave Something that name. About mama. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mary. Something about Mary. Yeah. So She's one of the only, she's the only other one in the Catholic liturgical schedule who has a feast to her name. She has the feast of the most holy name of Mary. Do you you know that one? Mm-hmm. Well, what's interesting? There's the feast of uh, you know that, but also the mission uh, Nombre de Dios, mm-hmm. the mission of the name of God, the first successful mission in, United in the United States. States of America in Saint Augustine. Mission Nombre de Dios. What were the it, unsuccessful it, that was with Marco There was Polo there landed. was several in the western part of Florida, so like near St. Pete and in the Panhandle, um, in the Texas. Mission, the mission of St. Arby's. Ooh. It was just it totally bombed. We were like, "What's this?" <laughs> <laughs> but the, all of these na- all of these feasts, you know, all of these um, honored names and missions, you know, they do have feasts. They have celebrations in the liturgy. You know, the name of God, the name of yeah. Jesus, the name of Mary. Yeah, it's beautiful, dude. It's kind of cool. Yeah, like it is. Dwelling on that. Yeah. So, Our Lady. Mer- Mer- Mary. Mary. Mary, right? Now, do you know where her the root of her name comes from? It's an Egyptian name. Is it Miriam? Miriam? Or? Well, that, that's how it was rendered, but you know, the meaning behind that, so, Mer, would MR, right? There's a, it meant beloved. This? Oh. The lo- beloved or loved. So, mm. Mer, right? And then... There was a god, Amun, right? So Meriatum, Meriatum. So the beloved of Amun, right? And that was one Ooh. of the names uh, that was very popular there, right? In Egypt, when the Jews were living there. Um, <clears throat> but it also took on a new meaning for the Jews because Mer also meant bitterness, right? So the bitterness of like salt water. So for them, they were naming their children. Miriam, Mariatum, but almost as a play on the word that's, this is, you have your beloved of your Egyptian gods. We have the bitterness of our captivity. Mm. That's mm. so fitting, man. The Hebrew. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, because Miriam, that's, uh, that was from Dude, Exodus, wasn't it? Miriam's? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So St. Jerome and Eusebius, we've talked about him before, they taking that bitterness and that oceanic view of it um, translated as a drop of the sea, right? So the Stilla Maris, a drop of the sea. Mm. And that's where it turned into Our Lady, the star of the sea, right? So it has that, that oceanic, that deep blue 
connection as well, even in its entomology. It's cool. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So, yeah. and Moses' sister was named Mary. Miriam. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, is that a root from Mary? Yeah, Miriam? that's Mariatum. Yeah. Mariatum. Mm-hmm. But there was Miriam, so they were turning it on its head and saying, this is the bitterness. And that's what he was saying, like the bitterness of captivity, yeah. which is such a cool, I, I never realized that. That's really But also beloved. Insightful. Yeah. So. Very, very insightful. Yeah. And then you apply that to the Blessed Virgin Mary and you get a whole nother look at her identity mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, the name's pretty fitting. Yeah, because you think about it, she is the Immaculate Conception. She is Mother of God, the one who has given birth to the Savior is the one, it's like the preceding the salvation and the freedom that comes from, you know, being led through the Red Sea, being led through baptism. Captivity. Being, coming being out led of from cap- out of captivity yeah. into, into the promise, yeah. you know, a land flowing with milk and honey. It's the Blessed Virgin Mary plays that same role, but perfects it in relationship to what Miriam did in, in mm-hmm. uh, Exodus. You know, and I think it really calls to our the Dolores of Our Lady, that, that bitterness of the, the heartbreak, but also... The mer- the beloved too. So there's her beloved, the bitterness, but it's all sweetness in the end, right? It's mm-hmm. a really very deep, very deep, theologically yeah, deep name. Is. Every time I say it, I'm gonna be like Mary. So mm, you know, you know, you know the the uh, myrrh, right? Yeah, the frankincense and myrrh. myrrh. Myrrh is the same root word. Myrrh. 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 The, and he like, reminded that, me of my cousin Richie. Richie Marr. He don't, he's like myrrh. 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 <laughs> So it was a bitter... It has a different connotation. It was a bitter thing as well. Mm-hmm. So there's kind of the concept of the mirror of the sea, the incense, the sense, the the bitter fragrance of the sea. So mm. pretty cool. That is very cool. Yeah. All right. So let's let's get into the... We'll wrap this up. We're getting into the home stretch here. And let's talk about the apostles. Rapid fire, let's, man. Yeah. Let's start with Peter. Boom, Say, all right, boom, Peter. Boom, Every, boom. Now, this one I think pretty much everyone knows, right? Now, his name was not Peter. His name, when he was born... Uh, well, his father's name was Jonah. So he was Simon Bardona, Barjona, so Shimeon Barjona, right? Mm-hmm. That would have been his name. They would have called him Simon. Yeah. But our Lord gave him a nickname, Peter, your rock, Hepha, uh, which turns into Petros in Greek, and from that turns into Peter in Latin. And right? all throughout Scripture, there's, there's names that change from mm-hmm. Old Testament to New Testament. And this is, you know, the principal, you know, the first pope. You know, Jesus is identifying because he sees him, he knows him perfectly, and he's able to identify him as the rock, the you rock. know, Peter. This now, is awesome. Now, you just need to say the rock. Mm-hmm. Now, the rock. I love so that his guy. real he's name. Awesome. Now, here Can we're... you smell what the rock yeah. So is preaching. If the first pope's name would have been before being called Peter was Shimeon Bar Yona, right? Yona is where the word the name John comes from. That's one of the variants mm. of John. Bar means son, son of. Mm-hmm. So it would have been Simon, son of John. But if you have Peter, right? The Rock, Rock Johnson. The first pope's technically, I mean, you can, you can translate it into Whoa, rock, the rock. Johnson. That's cool. That is pretty cool. That's I awesome. like that. Yeah. Can Wayne, you smell what the rock, the rock is? Rock Johnson. I love it. Yeah. Rock right. Johnson. So my, my, uh. This is my good friend, Rock Johnson. <laughs> Rocky John. Rocky, Rocky Johnson. It's a tough guy. Rocky. It's a, it's a good name. It is. All right. So my confirmation name is St. John. Mm-hmm. After St. John, I named my son, John. For generations, it was John in my family. I Love this name. So John, his name comes from the Hebrew name Yohanan. Now, Yohanan means Yahweh is gracious. Mm. So from Yohanan, it turned into Ionis. And there's a lot of variants of John. There's oh, you know, yeah. Ivan and oh, yeah. Jacques, right? So Jacques. That's one of the most common names. Just the, just the entomology of that name is really cool. Now, yeah. uh, St. Bartholomew. His name comes from the Greek word Bartholomeos, which means the son of Ptolemy, right? So Ptolemy was a very common Greek name, right? So, you know, the Ptolemaic Empire, yeah. um, the Ptolemaic system of the universe. It, the Ptolemies were one of the generals of, they were the descendants of one of the generals of Alexander the Great, who had taken over Egypt. That was their kind of, their loot. So... This St. Bartholomew was son of Ptolemy. Pretty cool. It is. Yeah. Um, St. Jude Thaddeus and St. Judas, uh, 
Saint Saint Jude, and then Judas, 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 scary, yeah. Judas the traitor, who's being chewed in the mouth of the devil for eternity. Mm. Um, they come from the Hebrew word Yehuda, right? Judah, from the tribe of Judah. So that's a pretty straightforward one, right? Yeah. Um, Saint James, the greater and the lesser, they come from the Hebrew name Yaakov, right? Jacob. So James is a variant of the name Jacob. Hmm. So it, it would have went from Jacob to Jacobus, Jacobus. What does Jacob, Jacob mean again? I, it's been so long. Um, God left. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because hmm. uh, you're going to have a son and they're like, I'm going to have a son, 800 years old. Yeah. Um, St. Andrew hmm. comes from the Greek name Andreas, meaning masculine. Andreas. Yeah. Andreas. I've always uh, liked the name Andreas. St. Philip. The word, it comes from the Greek word philippos, which means the friend of horses. There you go. <laughs> now, Philip, again, we're living in the Near East, and this is in the Ptolemaic, post-Ptolemaic era. Um, and Alexander the Great's father was Philip, so Philip was a common name. So he was, um, that's where that name would have been popularized from. But this is showing the kind of the Greek influence, the Koine Greek influence on the Hebrew culture at the time. Um, <clears throat> what? <laughs> Say what? Say what? Next name. The Saint Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so Coline. Matthew comes from the Hebrew name Matayahu, which Matis means Yahoo. Meaning, right? Matis Yahoo is like that That's rapper. A, yeah. yeah, it's the same thing. That just means Matthew, and it means the gift of Yahoo of, wow. of, Yah, of Yahweh. <laughs> All right. Yahoo. Uh, Thomas. Saint Thomas comes from the Arabic name Taoma, which means twin. Hmm. Uh, apparently St. Thomas was incredibly looked incredibly a lot alike our Lord Joshua. And <laughs> that's Jesus Jesus for all you people who are our paying Lord attention. Joshua. So they looked incredibly a lot alike. So that's where the word Thomas comes from. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, and then St. Simon, the zealot, uh, again, his name was Shimon, which means God has heard. It's got a nice name, Shimon. Shimon. And that would have also been Peter's name, but he has his own etymology. So. Yeah. Etymology. That's cool. So those are those. Some, some there names. is a lot to a name, and the name game today is taught a lot. Yeah. I yeah. learned a lot in this uh, this episode. That was very good. All right. So before we get going, I got two things I want to cover. Number one, it's a reminder. Go to CatholicTalkShow.com. Uh, subscribe to us on, yeah, on um, all the platforms. And uh, make sure you get to Patreon dot com forward slash Catholic talk show and support us so that we can continue making these shows. Now, the last thing I want to get into is the Inquisition. Oh Lord have mercy. Oh yeah. Don't, re <sighs> don't oh, remember. Oh sweet savior Joshua have mercy. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So yes, we're going to we're going to take it easy on you. Okay. I like when you guys take it easy. Now when all of these episodes of the Catholic talk show are deleted and that way it's not <laughs> stricken against your record and you become a, Ecclesial climber, and you finally find yourself not going to happen in in the conclave, and then conclave. the cardinal comes out and says, "Cardinale Pagano." <laughs> oh, God bless America! What's the name that's going to follow after that? When you become pope, <laughs> what name would you pick? <laughs> if you were pope, what name would you pick? Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, a, a, this is can, a hypothetical. I could think of many, many other people that that would definitely be in their their path. Definitely not my path. Um, God works in mysterious ways. Yeah, that would truly be an act of God. Trust me. Um, so, I would I would definitely like the first thing that comes to mind is my confirmation name is Valentinius. So uh, and has, Valentine yeah. Saint Valentine. So well, yeah. So um, which we talked about on our our episode on on Saint Valentine's Day. Um, so, I, and then it's funny because when I was praying in one of my eight day microcosms of the ex spiritual exercises, um, I was encouraged to ask God for a name and it was a part of my prayer. And mm -hmm. the name that I received was John and John has been a very, very, uh, big part of my priesthood, my life, just my identity. And, um, so I love John the beloved. So it'd probably be like Valentinius John or something like that. I don't know. What about you, Ryan? Cause now... 
everyone out there. A lay man can be elected Pope. Bob. Right. I was, I've was. i been campaigning for it on my new website, <laughs> ryanforpope.com. <laughs> dot org. Dot org. No, dot, dot US. You couldn't get the dot <laughs> org. <laughs> and I'm going to go on your Patreon, uh, <laughs> Evan. I'll support that. I'll be one of your patrons. What would you uh, pick? Oh. Jeez, I don't know. No. Evan. I know what you would pick. What would I pick? You would be Benedict like the 17th. No, I wouldn't. Really? No. I would, I would pick... There's never been a Pope Joseph, and there really seems mm. like there should be. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Pope Joseph like that. would be good. You call it Papa Joseph. I have my See, conversion I'd, I'd on like, the I prefer stations. the lineage of, of names. Well, so, then Pius the 13th. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Pius the 13th. Yeah. I like uh, Paul the 6th. Well, you'd be the seventh. Yeah, he'd be the seventh. Yeah, that's kind of a good number, right? Yeah. But you know, he'd be Paul the sixth, the second. <laughs> Six squared. Paul the sixth, the second. Yeah, that's I like that. Uh, that's like when Michael Scott's like, <laughs> like <laughs> Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. He's Paul the sixth, the second. second. That's, so that's funny. Oh man, that is funny. funny. Second Wayne Gretzky. I need to. I need to look into those popes that were Valentinius. Whatever. Ooh, yeah, make sure you got a good lineage there. Valens. Just in case, because I might have to change yeah. it. Well, I think most Obviously, John Paul II is, my, but I would Amazing. I would never feel Do you think there's like going to be a John Paul III? I don't think there'll ever be a John Paul III. Uh -huh. Who would want to do that? That's a gutsy move. That's a totally gutsy or move. Or is it a very humble move? Because John Paul was like, why would there ever be a John Paul, let alone a John Paul II, yeah. right? They were both saying, well, we want to continue the work of our predecessors. Yeah. And But I, I love that about JP2 because he loved John Paul I so much. And John Paul I didn't have a chance to truly lead in that pastoral capacity mm -hmm. of the Supreme Pontiff. So, I mean, I just look at that as, like you said, it was just so humble. Yeah. But I don't think there's anybody that would be able to come after John Paul II in a humble way. And JP3? Like, JP3? JP3 that has sounds it right. cool. It, it does. does sound pretty cool. It's got cool. a good ring to it. Yeah. It does. And now, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen within like the next two popes. Yeah. Right. I think some generations have you might, to go You might by. have a bishop who is elevated by John That's Paul. That's a good point. Yeah. I don't think like in 200 years you're going to get JP3. Hmm. I don't know. I think there needs to be some generational separation yeah. because I think there's just so much admiration when it comes from our generation of, of JP2. I think a Pope Patrick would also be good. The, the sign is yeah. that he's driving all the snakes out. Well, I like that. Maybe the next Pope will be the, the Pope Patrick. There you go. So everybody go to ryanforpope.com. <laughs> Dot us dot io <laughs> and, and let's start that petition. Yeah. Let's get it going. Right, yeah, Pope go Paul the sixth, the second. Go I'm to put a picture of me like with my two thumbs up. Like yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Church. Ryan for Pope dot us. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Now you can vote. Watch Ryan should be Pope. Ryan Sheila Ryan Delacrosse. Yeah, mm. yeah. The site's up. The site's up. It's, it's already up, man. Wow, that's tough. It's open to campaigning. I know. Yeah. I know the Holy Father Pope Francis is against ecclesial climbers and is really warned about that. <laughs> Thank God for that. I'm going straight Thank to you. the top but, here. But Pope Francis, Thank this you. is not a sign of um, rebellion. But we are. We're coming we're for your hat. campaigning. We're coming for the hat, Pope. We're coming for you. Don't be climbing. <laughs> All right. Don't All be right. climbing. Enjoy the rest of your day, folks. That was a good episode, guys. I uh, loved thank it. you. And yeah. thank you so much. So for hey, what's, in what's with our other names awesome. again? This is the Catholic Talk Show. This is Ryan Shield. Ryan Delacross Cross. and Father Richard, Richard Joseph. Richard Joseph. Valentine Pagano. And George. More in a name. All right. Catch you next time. God bless. Cheers. Cheers.